Hello and welcome to the farm. Today we are shooting a new acquisition to your optic. The brand is CZ and this is the brand too. Specifically, this is the Bren 2 MS in the 11 inch pistol configuration with a few optional extras, which I'll touch on later. Now the Bren did come to the US a couple years ago in a sort of different configuration that was more closely related to what the Czech military had requested. This though is more of a clean slate design and you can see that because it has a lot of the same sort of layout and such that you would expect for us Americans and our our habit for buying AR-15s. So it's a little bit skinnier, it's a little bit lighter than before. Polymer with carbon fiber reinforced lower, still the same upper receiver, short stroke piston and all that. Now the charging handle will come on the left side of the weapon when you get it. But it is configurable to go on the right side of the weapon as well. And uh, what would influence where you put that? Uh, there's a, a few things that you might wanna consider when you're figuring out how to set up the, the rifle or pistol. So for one, if you have a bunch of gear on, this lever may or may not get caught on your stuff when you have the rifle slung. Also, if you have a red dot or an optic or something that has a protruding attachment on the left side of the optic, like an ACOG, for example, that's gonna kinda get in the way of operating it from this side of the weapon. Now, of course, there's also personal preference. If you are fine with having it on the right side, you prefer it that way, then by all means, run it there. As far as controls, like I said, we do see a lot of familiar buttons in the familiar places when it comes to this rifle. So, still have the mag release, where you'd expect it and it is ambidextrous as well so it's actually this button right here to do the mag from the left side and the bolt lock is in the traditional location on an ar as well right here hit that pull it back and you're good to go and you can use that to then release the bolt in addition to that though i'll drop the mag to prove this you can lock the bolt back there's some there's some buttons right in here in the trigger guard. So you can press up on this part here as you pull the bolt back and you can lock that in very nicely. And to release it, there's actually three ways to do it. You can hit this button here kind of down to close it, or you could do the traditional AR method and hit the part there. Or because this is a side charger, you can just kind of do that. Now this charging handle is also non-reciprocating, so you are able to kind of put your hand over it like this should you want to do that. But the good thing is the charging handle can also be used as a forward assist, so you get the best of both worlds. Up front, you got some M-Lock, one section on the left, right, and bottom. To be honest, not a ton of real estate, but I have been able to attach my Surefire weapon light to this with pretty good success. Thanks to that non-reciprocating charging handle, if I need to use my light, I can just kind of hit the weapon like this and I'm good to go there. Moving back a little bit, I do like this little dimple right here. Uh, when I'm not using the uh, flashlight, I find it to be a good spot to put my middle finger. It's just a nice little index point. Same goes for this little sort of ground down area right here. It's a perfect spot for you to naturally want to put your finger when it's off the trigger. And I also like how on the uh, mag release here, it's flanked by these two little protrusions and the button itself is still nice and big, but at the risk of it being hit by accident, which you obviously do not want. So it's flanked by these here, so it's very difficult to hit it by accident, even if the weapon takes a spill or is ground along a table or something. Now there are some aftermarket hand guards that I have seen for the Bren that will extend this out a little bit, which would not be a bad idea to consider if this doesn't work for you. Up top, we have a full length Picatinny rail, comes with these iron sights as well. They are not night sights, but you do get that sort of uh, luminescent parts to them there. Now, as far as barrel length options, in 5.56, you have an eight 
11, 14 inch for the handgun varieties and a 16 inch rifle. You can also get this in 7.62 by 39, which will come in a 9, 11, and 14 inch. Something that I do want to mention though, if you are considering one of these in 5.56 and you want the eight inch barrel, you want to be a little bit more particular on the ammunition that you use should you want to use this for self-defense. Now the 11 inch barrel, is enough to get a 5.56 round up to the velocity necessary for it to do that, that tumble and fragmentation that makes a 5.56 round so devastating. An eight inch barrel, it just can't get up to that speed with your normal 55 grain ammunition. So there's options out there with different loads, self-defense loads, varmint loads. If you want more information on that, give us a call because there's a lot to talk about with it, but just something to pay attention to. It operates on a short stroke gas piston with the 11 inch gun here. It's important to note that when you gauge if your weapon is over gassed or under gassed, typically for ARs and the 16 inch Bren, you want your cases to eject kind of uh, three to four o'clock, you know, kind of this way direction. If it's over gassed, it'll be forward of that. If it's under gassed, it'll be behind that. With this though, you want to adjust that a little bit. So the, the middle of the road is actually two o'clock. So if your brass is coming out just a little bit forward, you're good, but it does have a two position gas system plus an off if you need that. So you uh, do keep that in mind. As far as sling mounts go, you have a hook up front, you have a loop in the rear and also flush cups on both sides. So when you are looking at, at uh, one of these things, you can get a hook for the front or as some people do, just get some 550 cord, tie a little loop in there, loop your sling through it, and then you have a uh, non-rotating quick detach right here. Moving back to the back of the weapon, this currently has a folding brace on it. This is not a factory item that we will have installed with the ones that we get. The ones that we get will have a plate on the back with the attachment point for an AR buffer tube. So if you do want to throw a brace or a stock on there and, and don't need to have it folding, it's already set up to accept that. Okay, trigger is going to be a little bit less than four pounds and it's actually very, very smooth. It's not something that I think needs replaced. I mean, it's not a guy's league or anything, but I think that the, I think that the pull on it is very light. You hit that first sort of stage there and then it's a, very crisp break on that. But um, there's a little bit of over travel on it, but honestly, I've found this very nice to use, especially when you're trying to shoot quickly or if you want to shoot with more precision. But 11 inch barrel, this is not a precision gun. So it's no doubt a quality weapon for sure and one that is worthy of consideration. But at the same time, one thing that might be kind of floating through your head is what is ever the problem with something like Mark 18 or some other 10 or 11 inch quality AR. They're about the same price. Uh, they're both gonna be very, very reliable. Now, one thing that the AR platform has that the brand does not is product support, aftermarket stuff. I mean, when the AR was created, we had Eisenhower as the president. Alaska and Hawaii had just become states. Jeremy Clarkson hadn't even been born yet. So as such, it's had a lot more time for a blossoming of many different companies and parts and that sort of thing. However, the brand does have some comebacks with that. I mean, first among which, stock folds, brace folds. Also, if you look at it straight on like this, if you draw a line from the barrel back through the weapon, it'll come out right about here, okay? Now, you have a support piece above the barrel. That means that when the gun recoils, it has less of a tendency to, to kick up. It just wants to go straight back. So the recoil impulse uh, from that and also just the engineering of the weapon, I do find to be a bit more pleasant than something like my Mark 18. It, it just sits on target very, very nicely. A little bit of a down, tiny bit, but that's pretty much it. Also, and this is especially true shooting suppressed, because there's no charging handle back here, there's no opening in the back of this receiver, the excess gas from the suppressor doesn't flow through the receiver and hit you right in your eyeballs. So this is much more pleasant to shoot suppressed than something like my Mark 18. 
And I know there's parts to ARs that you can get, like different uh, charging handles and, and such, to help kind of minimize that, but this thing out of the box was good. So final thoughts, it is a very impressive weapon. And whether you just want something different from an AR or you want something that is gonna be very dependable and very well made, consider the brand. Also, comment below what your thoughts are on this versus the AR platform. We definitely wanna hear from you there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you next time.